guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here with some um, books here and also some printed papers. And we are going to do some how to make um, junk journal envelopes using book images. So junk journal envelopes from book images. Um, so I'm going to just show you the books that I've brought along. So I've got this one here, which is Victorian Cottage Gardens. Um, I have got a haul video coming up where I kind of show some books that I've bought recently. But yep, this is one of them. Um, so gorgeous pictures in here. And then I've also got this one here, which is Treasure, um, Hilda Boswell's Treasury of Fairy Tales, which are very different images, obviously, um, from the Victorian Cottage Garden. So I thought we could play around and make some envelopes from, you know, from both of these. So let's do the um, Victorian Cottage Gardens first. So I'm just going to select one or two images from here. So I'll just kind of have a flick through, see what might work well. So, well, here, for example, on this page, there's quite a large-ish image. So let's use this because, you know, this will perhaps be a little bit more of a challenge to use. So I'm just going to tear that page out. And then just see if there's a smaller one that we could use as well to just, you know, give you a kind of couple of different examples. Um, I mean, this is a really lovely book. My only issue with this book is it's got gorgeous images on both pages. And so actually it, you know, proves quite difficult to actually use because, of course, you're having to choose between the images, you know, which image that you like the best. Um just have a quick look through I mean these are gorgeous to be honest oh these are so so difficult to pick images well let's take this one so yeah again they're really nice and I'm going to struggle to decide which one to use but yeah let's take these so I'm just going to put that book to one side so what I'm thinking is you could literally use this um you know as the front piece of your your envelope so you're going to be backing it with some paper. Now I'm using printables. Again, that's because I predominantly have printables, but of course you could use any book page that you like. Um, so I've got this one here. This is from my lace collection papers and I've backed it onto some of my junk journal basics kit too. So I think, you know, either side actually goes pretty nicely with this um, or with this side. So which image do I like the best? I really like them both so yeah definitely definitely a struggle right I'm going to go for this one so all I'm going to do because this is just book page it's obviously you know not the thickest I'm just going to fold this over around the image now again up to you really whether you want to kind of get rid of you know where this is like in a border sort of with a frame or not so I'm going to I think try and keep the frame on there so just taking that down like that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I've doubled this over so it's thicker because, of course, you know, this is not particularly thick page otherwise. So I'm going to cut this straight around by the frame. So like that. Okay. And then down here. I mean, I've left a little bit of an edge around the frame, although I haven't said that. As soon as I cut this, I ended up cutting right into it. But it's all going to be fine because obviously by the time that I've actually inked this up, you know, you're not really going to kind of notice where the frame starts and ends, to be honest. So that's my image. And then, like I say, I'm actually going to use this, which is from my lace collection on this side, backed with my Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. I mean, I personally think either side go really nicely with the envelope, but I think I'm going to have the lace on the inside and then this on the outside. So I just want to decide which side you want as the envelope flap. Now, actually looking at this, I'm thinking what would be really nice is to do a long ways envelope with the flap on this edge. There's always a temptation to do it this way and have like the flap here, which obviously makes it really nice and sort of roomy to get your bits in. But actually, I'm going to, I think, do it on this way round. 
So all I'm going to do is literally cut this down here along this entire strip. So actually I'm just double checking. Just double checking which side I want my flap to be. Well, perhaps I'll do this one. Okay. So, oh, I just want to cut this roughly here. Okay. Like that. And then my envelope flap is going to be here. So what I might do is now just trim this down slightly or maybe put a thumb hole in here. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to glue this at this top portion just because if I glue or if I punch a thumb hole, I want this to still be attached. So just going over, press that down. Just going to grab in one of my old stickers. This is a sort of chipboard sticker, which you know I'm not really likely to use these days. So yeah, I'm just using it like a glue spreader. Okay, like that. And that will then form my envelope. And then I can put obviously a thumb hole in here, you know, should I wish to. So I'm just going to trim this up slightly more because it's not very straight. Like that. So I'll just quickly ink around the edges of this. And this is where I say, you know, the fact I've cut that with a border, it's not really going to be noticeable anyway by the time I've actually inked it up. So like that. Okie dokie. Okay. Like that. Now, obviously, at this point, you could either glue it or you could stitch it. I'm going to take mine to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it. And then this will become my envelope flap. So it's a, you know, it's a long envelope flap. So I'm going to just build my envelopes and then I'll take them all to the sewing machine and kind of do them all at once. So I put that one to one side. Okay, so the next one, this one obviously a bit different because we've got a very large picture. I mean, I have got this picture as well, but I'm going to use this large picture. Now, really, really pretty picture here, but obviously this is going to be, you know, massive. So, I mean, I don't want to have the envelope as huge as this picture. So therefore, I'm going to just take in you know, what I don't mind losing of the picture. So like that, for example. Okay, squish that down. And then I'm just going to cut that around. So I'm going to first of all cut it down here and just use that edge as my guide. And then I'm going to decide from there where I actually want my picture cut around. So obviously, as you can see, I've just got a little tiny border that's left down this edge. So, you know, I could use that as my guide for how big I want to cut the rest. So, should we do that? Let's just go in here. Like that. And then here, like that. Okay. Just quickly trim this one down here. Right. And I am putting some book page bundles together um, to put into my shop. That's my shop on my website, the shabbydabbydoodah.co.uk. Um, so hopefully they'll be in there quite soon. So, you know, if, if you don't have kind of an abundance of books with, with pretty images, you know, because I tend to kind of favour books with images, really, um, you know, then, yes, I will hopefully be putting some into my shop very soon. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Right, so... For this one, we could obviously have the envelope flap here. We could obviously, you know, make it a sort of triangle, more like a traditional envelope, exactly, you know, as we fancy. I'm just going to check which way round I want this so as I get the, you know, the side that sort of complements the picture the best. Oh, it's a bit hard to decide, to be honest. I think they're all rather nice. 
I think probably like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this here and then I'm going to cut it along this side. So like that. Okay. Like that. And then obviously this can go over here like that. Now, obviously, if this were a traditional envelope, you'd have a kind of shape like this because I'm going to shape this down. So what you could do is shape your piece slightly. So perhaps we'll do that. So let's just take this down. I'm going to fold it here like that. Okay. This is all getting a little bit fiddly, but hopefully it will all be, all be fine. Now, I still haven't got very much further with my ring bound journal that we're making so what I'm going to do is I think use this as a bit of a guide for cutting my shaped bits so I might first of all use this as a bit of a guide here to cut my my shaped bit in my envelope so I'm going to put this here now I might be best off clipping it on so it stays put okay so I'm going to bulldog clip this into the edge okay now I want to keep the lady I don't mind missing the rest of the you know some bits from the rest of the image but preferably keeping the lady because otherwise it's just going to have a really strange look so I'm going to then whoops use this as my guide here Now, bearing in mind, this sheet is folded over. So I'm not going right to the edge of the paper. And I will show you, show you in a second what I mean by that. So although I've cut, you know, cut around my page, it's still attached. So therefore, I can then very neatly go in here and just glue this down to make sure that my piece is you know held together okay so go in like that and then spread my glue like that okay Not that out there So then this here is going to go like this. Okay, so now what I want to do is get my flap to have a bit of a shape as well. I don't want it to be as big as this shape, if you see what I mean. Uh, as big? No, I want it to be bigger, bigger than that shape, if you see what I mean because I don't want this, yeah, I don't want this to be bigger than this. Does that make sense? So yeah, what I need to do is put this here, again, to use it as a guide, because this, you know, this is kind of what I've used as a guide for the other one. But what I want to do is when I'm cutting it, I need to make sure this is larger than this, okay? I hope this is making sense. So I'm giving that a bit of a sort of wide angle like that. Okay. So I'm just sort of using it as a bit of a bit of a guide there, but giving it a wide angle. And then of course I can just go in and just round that off. I mean to be honest, it actually doesn't look too bad with that shape but I can now round those corners. And that way I've got more like a traditional envelope shape going on. So just going to round these just slightly. I mean, like I say, I actually didn't mind how it looked, but just, you know, just neaten it up slightly like that. Okay, like that. Okay, let's bin those bits. So again, this then goes in here like that 
and then you've got your envelope like that. So I will take this to the sewing machine and just stitch completely all around that. And that's that envelope. Okay, so that's those two from the um, uh, Victorian Cottage Gardens. So we're going to make a couple now from the um, children's books. Now, these obviously are very, very different images. Um, you know, hopefully you think, you know, that they're equally lovely. But yeah, very different look. Um, so let's take a couple of these now. My only thing is this book is so lovely, but a lot of the images are literally back to back. So this here at the top, this is also at the top. So, you know, it makes it tricky to decide because you're going to lose one of the images. So these, for example, these aren't so bad because we've got one at the top and one at the bottom. So I shall use one of these and then let's do a slightly different one. So, you know, hopefully a slightly different shaped one. Mm. I mean, obviously some of these just lend themselves better than others to being used. Um, so let's use this one up here. So, oh, the frog prince. I think that was called the princess and the frog when we were children, but anyway. Although this is a vintage book, so weirdly this must be, you know, probably from when I was a child. Right, this one, I'm going to snip this straight across here because, of course, I can then use this to double side this and make it thicker. So that's that one. I shall keep this because we can make something different with that. And then this one here, we've got the top and the bottom image. So again, just want to sort of cut that down. I don't really mind which of the images I use, to be honest. I think they're both really nice. Yeah, they're both equally nice, aren't they? So let's use this one. Right, so this one, very simple. I can just obviously double that over. Like that, okay. Now again, I have got obviously text around here. Um, obviously, if you didn't want the text shown, you could fold that further in. So now I'm just thinking actually perhaps I will fold that further in because perhaps the text is a bit, um, you know, obtrusive in there. So yeah, we'll fold that in and get rid of the, get rid of the text like that okay haven't decided quite how i'm going to actually finish this so let's just take that now like that okay and then this one obviously as you can see you know it's not got any text to put it so we're going to have to just back it onto something else so i'm just going to take in the book again actually let me just grab the book back Okie dokie. And I'm just going to take one of the, you know, opening sheets where hopefully it's just text. No, there's no opening sheet to this book. Oh, it's all pictures in here. Oh, it's all it's all pictures in this book. So yes, that, that goes out the window, that that idea. Um so let me just grab this one back. So I just want to grab a page of text. I'm just going to take this one. Oh no, this also <laughs> has got no texty pages. They've all got images, would you believe? I mean, when do you ever get a book that's not got any text pages whatsoever? I mean, oh, I don't believe that, do you? That's just like unheard of. Right, okay. So I've got some other book page here okay so pull this one in and yeah we're going to just use this to again you know back this onto just to make this nice and sturdy so i'm going to obviously cut this down and then we can decide how we're going to have this so cut this down here and here like that A bit more like that. And yeah, I'll just take it in a bit here, otherwise it's kind of like a little bit a little bit too lengthy, you know, it's kind of disproportionate. 
So, right, let's take that and pop that away. Right, so I'm going to just quickly glue this down onto the book page, okay? So just a bit around each edge and then just a little bit in the middle, okay? Uh, you know, literally this is just to sturdy this up so that it's not a really flimsy sheet of paper. So pop that there and then just can spread my glue. So I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope you are doing some crafting and having a nice time. It's very chilly here today. I don't know quite what's happened to our summer weather, but yeah, it's it's not very nice. I don't know whether it's going to cheer up later, but not all that great now. Right, so I'm just going to trim this down like this. Okay. Like that. Right, so for this one. Ooh. Oh, I'm thinking actually that looks pretty good with this. Mm -hmm. Right, that's not the one that I was going to be doing yet. So let me just put that to one side for a moment. Um, right, so this one. I've got a couple of different sheets here. I thought this might go quite nicely. Hmm. This is the curator's collection, the one with the bugs and the ladybirds and things. Um, and it's just backed onto these little journal card and envelope pieces. Um, yeah, I thought that might look good, but actually I'm not so sure. I have got this, which is some of my, I think this is from the French collection. So that might be quite nice. Now, what I was wondering with this one was whether I could make this, um, how would I describe this? So, you know, when you have an envelope and obviously it's got the flaps in and the flap at the bottom and the flap at the top. I was wondering whether I could do that around here. And so we'd have like bits showing and bits not showing. Now, I'm not quite sure how this will look because obviously I don't want to cover up too too much of the picture so right i'm going to have to do it this way up and ordinarily it would be like that wouldn't it yeah it would be like that with the flap coming down here mm -hmm. but i'm thinking if we did it like this so that we keep like the majority of the envelope showing Right, so I'm going to cut this down here, across here. Now this, yeah, is my French collection papers, but I've printed them onto this buff coloured card, or craft, craft card, um, which I just love using. So I'm thinking, yeah, fold this up here, like that. So let's just take this in here like that now i have not tried one of these ever before so this is kind of a new thing for me it may or may not work but you know it's all about experimentation isn't it and of course you know we never know things if we don't try them out so then what i'm going to do is fold the sides in oh mm, oh yeah fold the sides in like this so we'd go one here like that okay like that okie dokie and then this one come in on this side like that okay squish that down So then what this is going to be is a kind of frame for this. And then this here will be the envelope flap. Okay. So this is hopefully going to be how this is going to work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this out. 
Now where I've got these folds, I'm going to take this side down because this is way too big. So I want to have it sort of similar size really to the roots to the other side. Like that, okay. So that's going to sit in like this and this side like that. Then my bottom piece, I need to have just taken this in slightly. So I just want to taper that round and then cut this down here just ever so slightly. So not kind of like going in really, you know, like a mitered corner, but just slightly there. So take this out of the way and then put this one back. So this is going to sit inside here like that. Okay, and that's going to be like my frame around my envelope. Now I'm now wondering whether that looks rubbish and actually whether I should have it over and just have the sides glued down. I might prefer it like that, I think. And then of course here, we're just going to have our traditional flap. So coming down over here. So again, just take that down, fold it down, squish it. And then I'm going to obviously tidy up where I've got all these fold lines. So here, open that back out. And then I just want to cut here like that. And then cut here like that. Okay, and then take this round like that, okay? Oh my goodness me, like that, okay? So I'm just going to round those corners. So I've just put these together so that I can get these, you know, looking hopefully similar. I'm not making a good job of this and I don't even feel like I'm making a very clear, um, you know, job of explaining. Right, so I'm going to open this out so it can just be finished off because it was not coming apart very easily. So yeah, take that one down there. Okay. So this now is the sort of frame for my envelope and this is the pocket part of the envelope there we go and then that's that's the envelope there so I mean I think that does look quite nice actually now I was planning on having it this way I've got to say I'm not so sure about that because it's a bit weird here so I think I'm better off actually gluing this right down so yeah I'm going to just put this here do I need to trim this up at the top possibly So just take that straight across at the top, like that. Oops. Don't know what's going on with my cutting today. Not good at all. Right, just going to quickly ink this up slightly. Like that. And then just a little bit here. Okay. Right. So we're going to glue this one straight down onto this flap. So glue here like that. Glue straight across the bottom here. Okay. And this one is going to go on here. Now this one is not going to be a stitched envelope. Everything's happening with glue. So from that perspective, this one's nice and sim simple because, you know, there's no going to the sewing machine or anything like that. So that and then these little bits here come in just like you know a regular envelope now I'm just going to check that this is not going to get compromised when it comes in no nope, it's going to be okay so straight down here whoops like that and then just pop that one down like that and then here, exactly the same. So, like that. 
and in there. Now I have to be honest, I've not made a very good job of cutting these um, side bits. One is way bigger than the other and one is not very straight. This one here, not very straight at all. Um, but hopefully, you know, it's going to be enough to give you the idea, the general idea. So that's my envelope there. And then that flap comes down there. So I actually do really, really love it. I mean, my execution of it was, you know, left a lot to be desired. But I actually do really like how that envelope's turned out. And then, of course, on the reverse, you could then tie that in by having another image from the book, you know, where you'd traditionally have perhaps your address. You could have that on the back and that would tie the two sides together. So yeah, I really like that. Right, let's just very quickly now finish this one off because of course we've, you know, we've now spent a long time on that other one. So we've got this one. Now, what was I thinking to do with this one? I did wonder whether I could just double that paper over and then have this just like that. And that way, you know, it's lined on the inside. So yeah, the main reason for doing that is because obviously I didn't really have anything lined going on on the inside, if you see what I mean. So by doing this, it's just lining it, which I think would just be nicer. So I'm just going to cut this down. Oops. Like that. And just trim it off here at the side. Like that one. Okay. And then I'll just quickly ink this one as well. So, and this paper, this is from my Regency collection papers. Um, this one. And I have just printed this on, um, it's 110 GSM. And it's like a presentation type paper. So, yeah, if we fold that one over like that, actually, we could probably even do it this way around. Yeah, could probably actually even do it this way around. So, we put that, and actually what we could do then is have a very large flap. So, now what I'm going to do again here is just in case I put a thumb hole here, I'm just going to put quite a lot of glue along here now the reason for this is like I say if I want to put a thumb hole you know just with like my one inch circle punch I want to make sure that my papers all glued together I don't want suddenly gappy bits here so we'll put that together like that and then I will stitch all of this around on the sewing machine and around here and then this will fold over now this is too long currently so let's just squish this down and then we're going to trim it to size and then take it to the sewing machine. So I just want a slight gap here, you know, just so we've got enough to actually be able to get things in and out of the envelope. So yeah, let's just take it there like that. Okay, squish that down and then we'll just cut this around here. Oops. Like that. Trim this down here. Like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this and just trim the whole lot down here. And again, and I know I've said this lots of times before, you want to hopefully cut into your folded edge. If you cut into your open edge, the paper can kind of splay out and that way, you know, you don't end up with a very straight edge. Cut into your fold, you know, whenever possible because it really kind of, you know, is the difference between a neat or neater cut edge or, a, you know, splayed out cut edge. So, yeah, if you can, cut into the edge. So that's that one and then that will just fold over. So that was just basically taking a whole sheet and folding it over and that saves you coffee dyeing it or lining it or anything else. It's now lined, it's now double sided, you know, and you've got then 
a lined envelope and it feels lovely and squishy because of course it's you know it's doubled over so i'm going to take these to the sewing machine and then i will come back so hold on okay so i'm back from the sewing machine so let's see what we've done here so we have got this one here with the long flap okay so that comes over like that just trim off the excess there we've got this one here which is more like a traditional shaped envelope with the flap there you can see i mean i've not made a brilliant job here of like folding it or anything but it's all fine because by the time we ink these up and we decorate them you know all of that will be hidden and disguised anyway so here this is that first one that we made which was the long you know envelope with the sort of more traditional short flap so the flap comes over here like that and as you can see i also stitched a little bit of this yellow ribbon on there which i just thought looked so pretty because it just ties in these pretty yellow flowers i mean i literally did that because i just happened to have some yellow ribbon that was sat beside the sewing machine that caught my eye and i thought oh that's going to just look lovely with that envelope so that's those so let's just kind of do a couple of finishing touches to kind of just, um, you know, finish these off and give you some, you know, finishing off ideas. So if I take this one, obviously the more traditional envelope. So we just ink that all around. Okie dokie. Okay. So, and then of course, want to ink around here where i've cut the picture from the book and this is the bit where obviously i've you know not made a brilliant job of folding it and cutting it and what have you and the ink just you know disguises that completely so fold my fold back so that i can get in and you know just put a bit of ink down the center i mean again things like that they're not essential but they do make quite a big difference i think so like that isn't that just so gorgeous and then we can obviously put a couple of finishing touches on there. So I'm thinking to tie this in, we'll get the book back and maybe have an image from the book. So I'm just going to bring the envelope. So we just want to find something kind of similar colours. Oh, I mean, I'm sure you can see the dilemma in this book is that all of the pictures are just so gorgeous that it makes it really, really tricky to, you know, to use them. I'm going to use this one. I have to say it's kind of killing me because I love that picture on the back. It's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? But obviously you can't have, you know, you can't use both the sides. So just going to have to use, you know, just one of the sides. So this one here because i thought this would be quite a good size to put onto the back more like an address piece now i'm going to trim this in slightly into the picture because you could probably tell it was going to be just fractionally too long it wasn't going to overhang the envelope but you know it would sort of look disproportionately long in comparison to the shape of the envelope so just take that down there like that okay and just yeah take that in a bit more okay so yeah like that um maybe slightly more actually like that yeah something like that now again at this point could always back this with some other book page thicken it up and then it could actually be a pocket so let's quickly do that so just glue on okay like that and yeah glue this one down okay and then just oops smoosh this down sorry if you can hear the traffic noise outside i can never tell really what you can hear on camera and what you can't you know things that maybe sound quite loud to me here in the flesh you know maybe are not really picked up on the camera at all or sometimes you know maybe they're picked up if you're listening say on headphones or you know on a certain way of viewing because i know that you know my main time of watching youtube is when i'm at the gym and of course that's with my headphones on 
and actually strangely enough you know you can hear things that you can't necessarily hear if you're listening at home you know with your ipad kind of live if you know what i mean not live but you know loud loud not on headphones so that just kind of makes that more like a pocket piece now um i will just trim it down slightly here because it feels like it's not very straight okay oh honestly my cutting skills are just appalling today so yeah let's just ink that up a slight bit okay like that Okay, so that can go on there. Now, again, just going to glue this down. Actually, I'm just going to just smoosh that glue one more bit because it feels a little tiny bit bumpy. And sometimes it can feel a bit bumpy when it's glossy book page, which this is a sort of more glossy book page. It sometimes does have a tendency to have a bit more ripples in it than it would if it were a you know, more porous matte finished book page. But overall, I mean, it shouldn't certainly be a problem. So like that. And yeah, just glue this one down here. Like that. Okie dokie. Just smoosh that down all around the edges. Oh my goodness. I mean, how pretty is this looking? And then maybe have a little bit of trim or something on here so i've just got this florally trim here oh i just had this bow honestly these things which were, <laughs> were just sat here i know they look kind of like made for the project but they were honestly they were just sat there so yeah we could just have a bit of that and that maybe a little bit of lace which again was just you know loitering around on the desk kind of you know waiting to be used uh, we could have it this side just decide oh that's quite pretty there mm. right so just going to yeah put this down here I think okay so yeah press that one down very pretty now this one's just one of my bright butterflies so just take this down here so you know just grabbing in things that are loitering about on the desk i'm not you know trying to overthink this or pull in special bits i mean my desk's a tip obviously so <laughs> there's a lot of things to grab from but yeah I mean, funnily enough, I just think sometimes you actually get the best looks when grabbing, you know, things that are randomly placed, you know, randomly kind of spotted on the desk. Then sometimes if you've sat there thinking for ages and trying different bits and pieces. So, you know, it's quite nice to just, yeah, take things kind of as you find them. Just got actually one of these flowers. And again, you know, I've got some of these trims and things like that on my website as well. I think they are are on there at the moment um if they're out of stock they will be back in stock very soon um so yeah but do go over and you know have a look if you like any of these bits and pieces so yeah i'm just going to put this flower on here oh oh would you believe i've not had my hot glue gun switched on that is not good so yeah let's just glue this down with the wet glue just pop this butterfly down here okay and then this flower I think perhaps have perhaps have even like going up a little bit and perhaps I'll put a pearly center in this one let's have a look and see what that looks like oh yeah how gorgeous does that look? I can't believe I hadn't switched my hot glue gun on. I mean, what's wrong with me? I never don't switch my hot glue on. Okay. So, yeah. And then this flower just there to the side. And then, oops. Oh, gosh, come on like that so that looks very pretty doesn't it now i'm just wondering if we could have like an actual vintage postage stamp or anything 
Uh, just see what else I've got here laying about. Oh, I've got another one of these flowers. You know, just whilst we've put them down anyway, might as well put another one down. So, yeah, pop that on there. Oh, gosh, come on, no. No, no. Okay, that looks very nice, doesn't it? Now I'm just wondering, did we want any bling? Only because I just think everything looks better with bling. So yeah, we're going for the, the whole more is more. So let's just take a bit of this. Okay. Yeah, maybe a little bit of bling. Whoops, just to the side there. Oh my goodness, this is super fiddly. Okay, oops, like that. Oh, how gorgeous is this looking? And then I'm just going to flip it over. And then on this side, I think we're just going to have this bow. And I've just got this little bit of lace. So just wondering whether we could, could have that somewhere only because, you know, it's just laying about on the desk. And I think, well, might as well use it. I know I'm thinking maybe... Maybe we could use it on this side or something. I was going to have a vintage postage lamp, but actually I think I'm going to put this bit of lace here. So I'm just going to cut that curly top off, you know, like the scalloped edge from the lace. Oops, that's not stuck down there. So yep, let's just press that down. Okay, and then, yeah. I don't know whether this is going to take forever. To, oh no, yep. Yeah. So yeah, a bit of glue here. Right, there we go. So yeah, that looks very pretty, doesn't it? And then, yeah, on this side, we'll just have my, well, the, um, you know, the bow here. So, right. I would normally probably glue a bow on with the hot glue, but obviously because I then discovered I hadn't switched my hot glue on. I'll just use the Fabri-Tac, which is fine. It's, you know, it's just as good. So, like that. Okay. Yeah, like that. Now, I would love to have a label on here, but unfortunately, I'm not sure I've got any to hand. I've just got that little glass slipper. Do we want to have that anywhere? a bit weird to be honest it doesn't really kind of have a place on there does it so yeah probably not um just see if i've got any oh i have got this little ticket piece oh, i don't think no right okay so that's that little envelope so we'll just decorate one more just to quickly you know um show a sort of comparison so i'm now oh what have i done with my envelopes what have i done with them indeed I don't know what's happened to them. Oh, here they are. I thought, well, that's really strange. I've taken them to the sewing machine and now they've gone missing. Right, okay, so we've got these ones now. Obviously, this one's, you know, very different because we've got the the long flap. So let's just ink this one up. Okay. Like this. Okay. dokie. Like that. And then we'll just open this out. Just ink it everywhere here now. Like that. Okay. So, oh, I love this one. So, like that. Now, this one, I'm thinking we could do something like put a, um, you know, a, an eyelet or something in here. And then I've just got here to the side, I've got some of my my shoe printables I mean I just thought they're quite fun aren't they the little shoes you know because this is quite a you know fantastical kind of look you know being the um children's book so I thought oh perhaps perhaps a little shoe would look quite cute with this um, let's just have a quick look I've also got a boot so these are from my shoe set two. 
um, which we've used these recently as well, you know, with the freebie that is on my website. So yeah, if you haven't got the freebie, do go over and get it. I mean, I love it when you use like the children's books because they just feel, you know, so, um, uh, what's the word? You know, that you can be very free with your colours and things like that because obviously, you know, they've got such a, a bright look. So, yeah, I'm kind of thinking like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring the children's book back in and we'll just see if there's another image that we could use from that same story so the princess and the frog and this book's actually got these little pictures as well so i just see if there's any here oh that's annoying because we could have used this one but it's stuck on the cover i wonder if it's aha uh -huh. so at the back of the book there's another page identical so what we can do we'll tear this one out like that okay Because obviously that's, you know, part of the same story. And then we can have this on the front of this envelope. So just take this one down. Like that. So, yeah, just this one up. Okay, and then let's just have a quick scout around, see if I can see anything kind of glaringly, you know, um, seeming like it would be ideal to go with this. Uh, I have got this little bit of lace here. So we could have a little bit of lace. Oh, maybe the shoe. Just because, like I said just now, you know, I feel like something quite fun and whimsical, like having the shoes. I mean, I know this is not, you know, it's not the story of Cinderella or anything. It's, um, you know, the frog, princess and the frog. But I feel like the whimsical side or the whimsical aspect of the shoes, it just lends itself quite well to going with the, you know, the theme here. So I'm just going to double check that I wouldn't prefer, no, I think I do want the blue shoe there. So put this shoe here, like that, okay. Yep, and then here, let's just pop this down on the front. Like that, okay. And then the shoe so I'm just going to have some of this lace running straight down the edge there now do I want some lace on the underneath as well or maybe the underneath instead of so let's put the lace here or maybe yeah maybe as well or maybe instead we'll see how it looks in a second so let's put the lace down here. Oh, come on. Oh, isn't this annoying when um, your glue starts misbehaving? And I've done so well right up until this moment. <laughs> okay, all right, let me just clear that nozzle. Okay. So, yeah. Pop this down here, running along that edge. Okay. Like that. And then here, just want to check whether I want to have more, more of the lace again and the shoe or just the shoe. Oh my goodness, how lovely is that? And then I was going to have like the hole with the eyelet um, and some baker's twine. But in actually thinking, I don't really need the hole with the eyelet. So what I'm going to do 
is just get some baker's twine and then glue it straight under the shoe. So in fact, I'm going to glue it straight under the lace and then straight under the shoe. So pop the, the baker's twine here like that. Oh, come on. Like that. And then here, pop the lace down, running straight down that edge like that. Okay. I mean, everything's better with lace, isn't it? It just looks so pretty. And um, we'll just snip that off there. And then where I've got that baker's twine, so I'm just going to snip that in the same place. There we go. So, yeah. And then you'll we'll just take the shoe... And, you know, I mean, that shoe, we've not really got anything else blue on here, you know, other than that little tiny bit of blue here on this weird fish. There's not really any blue. But, again, because it's got that whole whimsical children's book type feel, I think we can get away with it. You know, it's, it's bringing something else into this because it's got that, you know, light-hearted kind of children's book type of feel going on. So could have a flower I don't know whether it really needs one I mean I guess the flower then picks up the pink from these flowers yeah maybe we'll just pop the flower on so again just because it was you know laying around on my desk I might as well just use it so pop that flower down there I don't think I'll bother with the butterfly but yeah no I don't think it needs it right so baker's twine wrap it round and then obviously you can just, you know, tuck it in on itself like that. So the envelopes that we've made, we've got this one with the long flap and obviously your envelope pocket there. You could obviously put some plain, you know, coffee dyed paper or something here and then use this as journaling uh, space here. I don't seem to have any coffee dyed paper right here to hand, but yep, you could always put some coffee dyed paper there. So that's a gorgeous, you know, concept for an envelope. So like that. And obviously all of these, they're just, you know, your junk journal envelopes with your book pages. So hopefully kind of lots of ideas here. So this one, we've utilized two of the book images we've got a pocket here on like you know the front or the reverse of the envelope and then we've got the book page here which we've even cut down into a traditional envelope size or envelope shape and that's like that actually I'm thinking this one could do with a label which I wanted to put a label on but I didn't have one to hand I've just spotted these sort of yeah on the underneath the pile so I'm just going to quickly grab this you can just then have this one okay like that okay so I'll just quickly ink around that a bit so yeah I think that just kind of benefits really from having a label somewhere maybe even down the bottom I mean, to be honest, it looks good everywhere. It's, you know, yeah, anywhere at all, it's, it's going to work. So I'll just pop that up there like that. Okay. So that's our traditional envelope here. And then pocket on the reverse. So that's that one. We have got this envelope here, which of course is more like a, you know, a long document type envelope you put your stuff in there and then you've got your flap and of course you put your address bit here and then we've got this one which we did not get round to obviously decorating this or anything like that but you know again super fun concept it's not quite glued down um this seems quite resistant to gluing for some reason and um yeah you've got your envelope here and then like we said you could decorate the back with some more book page and things to tie in you know the front and the back so but that's your envelope pocket in there so hopefully that's given you some ideas they're just a few kind of junk journal envelopes using book pages and yeah hopefully some some good little ideas there for using some of your book images 
to make envelopes for junk journals. So, um, yep, hope that you like them. And obviously, if you want any of the papers or anything that I used, they're over in my Etsy shop. And like I say, I will be trying to put some book page bundles and things onto my website quite soon. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks then. Bye.